Mashallah, tabarakallah, assalamu alaikum and welcome dear viewers from around the world. Welcome to a new and exciting episode of your favorite program, Let's Talk, with your favorite host Malik on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm thinking about changing the name of this show to Real Talk because we're talking about some really interesting topics with some really interesting guests and today is no different of course. Today I want to talk about technology. What happened to the Muslims? We're like living in the Stone Age compared to the Western world. We used to be ahead, now we're behind. Of course, I can't answer these questions, so I have a very prestigious man, a lecturer of Islamic studies at the uh, Al-Azhar University. You've seen him on uh, Let's Talk before. Mashallah, he's back. Dr. Mahmoud Abdinami. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. And of course, you guys, we have a wonderful and a handsome, Mashallah, Bismillah, Mashallah, studio audience. Thank you guys for being here as well. And Assalamu alaikum as well. And I want you guys to put your thumb in the air if you memorize the theme song for Let's Talk. How many guys have memorized the theme song for Let's Talk? One guy, that, okay, in the next segment, inshallah, I want you to sing the uh, theme song for us because you guys have to be true fans of Let's Talk. You have to know the theme song, inshallah. So I thank you guys. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, technology. Uh, does Islam prevent us from adhering from technology because it, it seems that way? Uh, uh, of course not. Islam is encouraging everyone to seek knowledge. Knowledge means many things. Knowledge doesn't mean just the religious or the knowledge that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but all kinds or types or sorts of knowledge. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَرْفَعَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raising those who are good believers and those who seek knowledge, whether it was technology, whether medicine, whether anything relates to knowledge, relates to uh, this type of technology is recommended by Islam. Okay. So Islam promotes technology. Islam okay. can never oppose technology as some people say or as some people view, you know. Because some people say let's restrict ourselves to the Islamic sciences, don't bother yourself with things outside of uh, Islamic knowledge, but this is false. This is wrong. This and wrong. We have, I believe we have hadith also, Doctor, mentioning this about seeking knowledge. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. So there's no doubt about, there's no doubt about the, uh, uh, seeking knowledge. But uh, what happened? I mean, in the past, Doctor, the Muslim uh, world was ahead. Yeah. And now we found behind. Why? Uh, let's go back first to the, just give you a brief about the Islamic, uh, or sorry, the early Muslims who sought knowledge and who were pioneer in technology. Excellent. We Excellent. have, first of all, in, 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 in Spain, Muslims were the first people to introduce what's called the irrigation system. Until now, the majority of historians agree that the system which is used in Andalusia now in Spain right. uh, is still the same thing like the Islamic origin or the Islamic one. Mashallah. We have great scholars like Al Bayrouni who had written about uh, movements of the moon itself. He had a book which is called The Box of the Moon. We have another book which is written by Banu Musa. The book had hundreds of devices in a way that were, were introduced in this time. So uh, from the very beginning, Muslims were pioneers. Okay. And they are supposed to be like that because if we read the Quran, we might be shocked when we know that the first word in the Quran it says read. Excellent point. The first word which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, it says read. It doesn't say read just Islam or just the Islamic uh, types of knowledge, the Islamic sense is not a tree. Read means you read everything. Another example is the Prophet Sallam. One day he told one of the companions, I, I think it was Zayd ibn Haritha, may Allah be pleased with him, he told him to try to learn another language beside Arabic. Uh -huh. right? So uh, they were the pioneers one day, maybe for many centuries. But what happened now? I, I don't know. Oh, whom should we blame? Should we blame <laughs> Muslims? Should we blame the situations we are going through? I have no idea. Good, it's an excellent point because I actually read a book called uh, The Crusade to Arab Eyes and it gave a story about the Crusaders when they came to, uh, to the Middle East they were behind with medicine and science and technology in general and they had taken this information with them that they learned from Arabs and took it back to, to Europe and even the Greek philosophy I believe and things like that were actually reintroduced to Europe yeah. through Arabic translation so subhanAllah I think we've uh, we, we're going in the wrong direction that's, that's definitely for sure let's yeah. talk about uh, something specific let's talk about the internet yeah. uh, Dr. Mark. Well, how is this uh, 
how can something like the internet, how can we benefit from it, and what should we stay away from when yeah. we talk about the internet? The internet itself, you could say it's double-edged sword, or okay. double-edged, anyway. So if you are using it properly, if you are using it according to what Islam says to us, you can use it, first of all, to seek knowledge. You can use it to teach, like right. distance learning, for example. Right. You can use it for the activities. Yeah. We have, mashallah, we have loads of websites now that are mainly interested in, in giving da'wah for others. Right. right. You can use it to teach yourself a new language, for example, yeah. or to get any type of knowledge. Nowadays, many people, uh, um, um, it's something very funny to say that the internet now became their sheikh. <laughs> Anybody who has a fatwa, right, you go to Google, Google for example, right. and type the fatwa, and then the, 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 the search book will lead him to many right. different fatwas. So this will save time. Yeah, of course. And you can, if you in the libraries, you can download thousands of books and thousands of articles according to the field that you are looking for. Right. It's the good point. Right. But, but Shaitan is there also, Doctor, isn't he? Yeah. With the internet. What are, the, what are we... What are, the, what are some problematic things with the internet that we need to look out for? Yeah. For example, there's... When you go to search for information on the internet, there's a lot of bad things in there that can distract you, isn't That's there? Right. Yeah. First of all, when you try to find uh, an information, a piece of information, for example, you have to try to find out who or who is uh, giving you this information. Right. Like the website itself is it trustworthy, yeah. reliable? Because and and here from this channel, I have to warn many people because there are loads of websites now oh. that are none by. Non Muslims. Yeah, people attacking uh, Islam like in general. For, for example, just, just to give some examples, there is a website which is called Submission, another website called yes. Answering Islam. Excellent point. I, right. I'm familiar with those websites as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, at the first point, they have some Quranic verses, and, but if you go deeper inside yeah. these websites, you'll find them, they try to cast doubt. Uh, in your heart about the Islamic yeah. beliefs, about the Prophet, about his wives, okay. about so and so. Right? So, you have to check. Where you get your information from? Is yeah. it from a Muslim and good reliable source or not? Because yeah, of course. Yeah. Excellent point, Doctor, because I feel like with, with the internet, it can be very misleading. And I believe that the internet needs restriction. I come from the United States and people say, no, 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 there, there should be freedom on the internet. But yeah. like you said, I don't believe that anybody should be able to write anything they want yeah. and, to, and to be able to uh, have no regulation uh, regarding that. So like you said, the internet is definitely uh, a double-edged sword. But subhanAllah, doesn't, hasn't it opened many, many doors for us? Like you said, we can make da'wah and, and do work. From, from, from your home to all around the four corners of the world. Yeah. I, I uh, when, I, when I was in the UK, one of my main sources for money was the internet because I used to make a kind of trading, for example. And uh, nowadays I am using it for also another source of money. I am making translation for some pl publishers. I have never met them. They have never met me. I send them my work. They send me the money. So you can use it as yeah, a, a source for money. Yeah. You can use it for, uh, if somebody is, is living far away, for example, you can use it to talk to him, write messages, write, nowadays, for example, the mail. The yeah. mail system in the internet, like website, or Yahoo, whatever, yeah. it saves a lot of time. In the past, we used to write a letter and then send it. It might yeah. take 10 days, 15 days, or but something now it's immediately. Yeah. So this is one of the graces of Allah subhanahu wa yeah, ta'ala. But you know what I noticed also when you talk about the internet, the search engines, Google, Yahoo, all these companies, if I'm not mistaken, are Western companies, and we have become the consumers in the Middle East and throughout the world. Yeah. Uh, I wish there was uh, Muslim companies and Muslim search engines and more, uh, if we can create more, instead of just... We are behind. They, the Western countries are, are creating the internet yeah. search engines and these things, and we're just using them. And so that's a bit uh, disappointing. I wish that we could come up with, we could advance ourselves somehow. And Great, yeah. I, I, should, I, I think we should cooperate to create something like Muslim search engines. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure about the website itself, but I think that there was a search engine which is run by Muslims. And it, the, the amazing thing about this search engine, it prevents anything which relates to wine, to oh, things that contradict with the Muslim right, creed. Right. So if you type any, for example, thing, it will never give you any result. It just gives the Muslim results or things that go oh, with the Sharia. Say, yeah, that we could say that's an excellent point because as you know, especially for our youth, like if even if you're searching for a good topic, pornography, music, all these things pop up into your screen yeah. without uh, watching. So I think that's a big responsibility for us as Muslims and as parents uh, yeah. for our youth. I had to close the segment. We're going to be right back, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, with more from you, inshallah. And we have a second seg uh, a report as well. And we have a second guest, you guys, that you haven't seen before on Huda TV. He may be launching a new program about technology, so you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Ask Hoda. If you're still in Mecca or
close by to Mecca, then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as he, it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay zakah for it. Forbade praying witr, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witr, three rakahs, and sitting after the second rakah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals, but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, he will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back you guys, thank you for staying tuned. I'm still here talking about technology. I'm still here, of course, with uh, Dr. Mahmoud al Dinawi from uh, El Azhar University. Thank you, Doctor, for staying with us. Thank you very much. And of course, we have a new exciting guest that you haven't seen before on Huda TV. He is from the Department of Science and Engineering at the American University of Cairo. He's at, uh, also a cons consultant, at the consultant at the King Fahd Universe uh, Quran Complex in the, the KSA. And of course, I'm talking about uh, Dr. Baha. Saleh. Thank you, Dr. Baha, for being here today. Thank you. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you. Thank you. As well, and I actually, my Arabic is very poor, and I mispronounced your name, and I apologize. Baha Khairi Saleh has correct. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. And don't blame me. We're going to blame my Arabic teacher, Muhammad Adil. He's the one who... And of course, we have our studio audience. You guys, thank you guys for uh, being with us in, the, in the, this segment. And I hope you guys have some questions at the end of the segment. Okay? And whoever asks the first questions has to sing the same song, theme song for Let's Talk, inshallah. Okay, so. Uh, doctor, we were talking about... Uh, the internet. And you uh, brought up a point. What does the word internet mean? Uh, it's great. Uh, if you look to any dictionary, you didn't find the meaning of the internet. It's not Arabic, it's not English, <laughs> it's not French, it's not Sp Chinese. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't think anybody thinking what the internet means. Uh, I know it's, it, it's related to the word net, which is network, but right. it is now, it is like just name or just uh, yeah. terminology. It is a term now. Yeah, and everybody using the internet and looking for the benefit or the, the, the good uh, side or the bad side, but right. no one knows what the, 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 the meaning. Nobody knows. <laughs> Dr. Mahmoud, do you ever think about that? Consider that the internet. What does that word mean? I never really uh, thought about it myself either. I don't know, but <laughs> maybe my own ijtihad. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, uh, it, it means maybe international networks, for example. Maybe international networks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's an excellent point. Yeah. I want to tell the viewers at home, uh, give us an email at talk at TV if you have a better, uh, if, you, if you think you know what that what the word internet means. <laughs> yeah, what it gives. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the internet and its uses. How have you used the internet? Do you have any websites or how do you use internet in your personal life? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm working with the net for um, more than 16, last 16 years as a computer programmer and an uh, internet programmer. Okay. And I'm start thinking, uh, can I get benefit from the internet uh, like a media? And uh, start making some research about that for the last four years. I make uh, electronic journal for the blind ah. people. Oh, wow, mashallah. And after a while, I think I'd like to, uh, to enhance my idea a little bit. So I uh, move it from electronic journal to electronic library also for the blind people or the visual impaired oh people. Wow. Uh, after a little bit of research, I find, okay, why I'm making journal or why I'm making library? I'd like to get more benefit, not in life. I'm looking for the other life. Yeah. <laughs> so Excellent. I start creating uh, uh, or uh, developing a website for visually impaired people for teaching them the Quran. Oh, wow. Uh, the idea uh, that the King Fahd, the Quran complex, like this idea very much and does the uh, support me with the, with their files and media. They having the Quran with different sheikh and they having oh, a lot wow. of uh, files. So I start creating that site. The site, finally, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, being a real site now, we can find this site working now with more than seven languages. We are seven languages till now, inshallah. Uh, <laughs> I'm traveling tonight to, to Saudi Arabia. Inshallah, we'll launch the eighth, the eighth lang oh, okay. language and uh, make another two languages with them. Oh, mashallah. So uh, if, you, if uh, the audience like uh, to check that, they can find the, the, that site. If you just simply go to the Google uh, search engine and just write uh, teaching Quran with voice guidance or uh, Q 
qsound.qurancomplex.gov.sa. Masha, thank you very much. Have you ever heard of that concept, uh, teaching Quran for blind people online? Have you heard of that before? No, really, this is the first time. Yeah, Masha, I think you're a pioneer. It's an interesting idea, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Pioneer, this is yeah. the first site all over the world. It, there is no site directly to the blind people. This is the first set of the Mashallah. blind Mashallah. people. Yeah, 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 yeah I think we're a pioneer in this regard. Okay. Uh, Doctor, I want to uh, go back really quick. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the segment. You may be launching a program uh, with Huda TV about technology. Uh, inshallah, inshallah. Uh, uh, that will be starting, inshallah, soon in uh, this uh, January. Business okay, business. Business. And you'll business. be talking about just technology in general? Technology in general and uh, sharing information because technology and sharing information, as we mentioned uh, before about the Internet, the right. Internet is a big pool for information. Right. And sharing information or the audience who, who put the information inside right. that pool, making right. that pool uh, available for everybody. So yeah. with the sharing or the, with the concept of sharing, that make that pool very important to, to all the others. SubhanAllah. Uh, inshallah, that will be uh, very soon, inshallah, this year. We're looking Isn't forward to it. Isn't it. And I wanted to change topics a little bit also, Dr. Mahmoud, and talk about smartphones. I'm sure you're familiar with, you see young people with these these big phones. They're like a computer almost. Yeah. And uh, I think, just like the internet, they can use, the, as you said earlier, as a double-edged sword. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Doctor, what do you, what do you think about uh, smartphones? Are they healthy? I've seen statistics from the World Health Organization that say they let off frequencies, and perhaps they're not even healthy for us. Well, uh, if you're looking just for the, this area, which is the health, I think uh, there's more research about that area saying that uh, how dangerous it is, especially when you are using this equipment or this technology. Okay, put the smartphone ahead and think about any technology. If you don't understand this technology and how it's work, how, how okay. that would be dangerous for you. Don't use anything without understanding the techniques, the, the, the term, right. everything, right. the okay. details. So what my advice is, before going to anything, just read a little bit about it. Don't go to school before reading about school or know what, uh, what we're going to study. Yeah, yeah. So smartphone is, we can say, is harmful, especially when people are using these phones for more than hours a day. Yeah, yeah. And now it could not only in health area, it could also at social area. Yeah. People, can, people are talking to, to, to themselves now. They have more than two, two telephones. They talk from one one and listen to the other one. So what's after? Uh, of course, yeah, that, that's an excellent point, yeah. And uh, Dr. Mahmoud, I, well, I'm from the United States, and I remember that a very famous man had cancer in his ear, and he died very young. Yeah. And, and then I, I read a, several reports on CNN.com, the World Health Organization had said, perhaps these, these cause cancer. We won't know for 30, 25 more years or 30 more years, right, Dr., yeah. until people who've been using smartphones for all this time, yeah. if we start to... But can you talk to us about the frequency? The phone sets off a frequency, right? Uh, uh, any technology using the, the, the wireless is mm. using something we call it frequency, the frequency which we can send or receive data through that, that technology. Okay. okay. But people who are think, talking about wireless, they thought that it's only computer or maybe it's smartphone, but do you know that this frequency which the smartphone is using is the same frequency of your microwave? Inside your I home. I mean, think about that, doctor, isn't it? A microwave, yeah. which is not really used in the Middle East. A microwave is something that it just heats the food up really fast. We use it a lot in America. Yeah. And the, the doctor said, people said, don't leave it open and don't use it even around pregnant women because yeah. it's dangerous. So imagine now we're keying around our, our microwave in our pocket and putting it to our ear. Oh, well, I advise my student, if you have a problem inside your home with, with your computer, put it far away from the, the microwave so the problem will be fixed if you have noise yeah. or something like that. And simply you can, you can feel that if you put your telephone or your smartphone in, on the top of your TV and just try to ring to the yeah. phone and look to the picture. What's uh, going to the picture? It's freaking. I never thought yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Come on, think about that. Yeah, yeah. What about your body? Don't you think that your body is sensitive more than the TV? Yeah. It's right. receiving <laughs> yeah, yeah. these signals exactly. Yeah. I tell you something. If you have the sensitivity of the smartphone, right. you can pick up the, m the phones by your ear without using any wires. If you, if you have the same frequency. <laughs> 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 and so maybe, maybe say it, no, Omar. Maybe oh, Sayyidina okay. Omar, having, having such, when there is, uh, uh, I don't remember the, the, the war, and he's at the, the mosque, and he's talking from the mosque, and the other guy listening to the him when he's in the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Gabal. And Gabal. Yes. This is something yeah. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody called Sariya, Sariya. And Sayyidina yes. Omar, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes revealed other things to people whom he loves, like Khadr and Musa and Sayyidina Omar, oh. it was about maybe a few hundred kilometers away from Syria. He said to Syria, just try to stick to the mountain. Oh. And Syria stuck to the mountain and they won the battle. Because of the instructions of Sayyidina Omar. Ah, subhanAllah. This is not using any smartphone. This is before smartphones. <laughs> An another thing, sorry for, for technology, uh, I was reading a very nice article. It says that 
although our te uh, technology has many advantages, it has many disadvantages. Go ahead. Continue. Just one example. Go ahead. Now it makes people very lazy. In the past, we used to go to the TV yeah. and try to change the channel. Yeah. Now you have the remote control. Now, in the past, we used to walk to go to the post office. Yeah. But now we don't go to the go post office. You are at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just send email. So, yeah. so it makes people more lazy. Now, instead of going down and just you turn your car on and you, you just go yeah, from where you live, you just buy uh, the automatic like the remote control. Now they have something called smart homes. Smart homes from far away, you can just turn the uh, fridge on and off. You can turn, for oh, example, the right. cooker on and off. And so this power. makes people more lazy. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Actually, uh, before the program, we were talking to me upstairs in our office about uh, the social diseases. We were talking about video games, but we can talk about this as far as internet, too. There's mm. some social diseases that may develop. Yeah, sure, isn't there, sure, doctor? sure. Well, uh, we can start talking about this social disease, even if it's not... Uh, like uh, it's increasing on the world or nobody nobody start re realizing that problem but right. uh, do you think the family having the same relation as before we have the Facebook now the child at home sitting at home using the computer try to find a friend he doesn't want to have a <laughs> real friend <laughs> think about that so I mean, I to what you were so saying it's a visual yeah. friend now it's a visual friend yeah. <laughs> after a while he's looking for visual father because his father is not yeah. doesn't have enough time for him yeah, or maybe yeah. a visual mother yeah, right. And uh, the youth now looking for visual married or the so yeah, it's right. break the family. Yeah. Each member of the family try to find something in his uh, imagination and search on the net, try to find who's match his imagination. Yeah. And right. I'm sure whatever he find is not the right choice. Right. Because <laughs> at the net the main problem with the net is uh, everybody on the internet can show not himself, but he will show what he whatever likes. Yeah. He won't the other see him, yeah, how it right. looks like. Yeah, that's a big problem. So it's not the real. Yeah, ex excellent point. And actually, uh, uh, Facebook, there are some positive uses of using a document because the Egyptians get the idea. They plotted a whole revolution yeah, uh, on yeah. Facebook, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, so uh, d d wouldn't you agree there is some po positive aspects to, to, to Facebook, for example? I mean, the Egyptians, <laughs> I don't want to talk about politics, <laughs> but they made a whole revolution. They did something that they couldn't do for 30 years, a bunch of kids on Facebook. I tell you something, this is the, the good thing about the technology. Uh, the technology is not uh, is for a special person or for a special government, it's for everybody. So if we talk about the Egyptian revolution and the internet, I'd like to say that the people are more educated than the, edu the, the government that time. Yeah, they were totally, they're all so they are using uh, the so tool. Yeah. Yes, they have no idea what hit them. Yeah. The government cannot go ahead with, with yeah. them. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Yeah, the, the regime, they're sleepwalking. They're too busy in the old way of, of, of regulation. The, the Facebook hit them like, uh, yeah. Didn't even see it coming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I want to go to the studio audience real quick. Does anybody have any questions, perhaps? And uh, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I have questions kind of off the topic of internet. But that's okay. That's excellent. But uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you tell us where you're from? I won't make you sing the same thing. It's okay. <laughs> but where you're from, your name, what you do. Give us a little bit about yourself. Uh, uh, my name is Yusuf. Um, I'm Somalian, but I'm, I live in Canada. Okay, excellent. Thank yeah. you, brother. You came all the way for the TV? Uh, well, thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mister, go ahead, go ahead, and share your comments, please. <laughs> okay. Well, basically, um, just about the oh, about technology, just um, basically, information that's not regarding to Islam. Basically, um, you know, in the West, for example, there's many students, you know, go to university there, have a lot of say uh, engineering degree and stuff like that. They're very knowledgeable, but they're lacking in Islamic knowledge, basically. So, I was wondering, this day and age, you know, to have just ha to a way to have a nice balance of Islamic knowledge and also knowledge for, you know, technology, internet, and other things, and just to be basically a good Muslim when it comes to that field. Excellent comment. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, Dr. Ankur, what do you think? I mean, we have to have a balance. We can't be, we have to be a, a moderation and, and balance our, our studies, don't we? Yeah. We can't, right. we can't just be a, a nerd, as they say, and, and be focused on technology mm -hmm. and neglect Islamic science. Do you, do you think that's happening with the young people? Uh... Unfortunately, yes, because yeah. that would be a very big problem. I, I remember that maybe two years ago, three years ago, as I was watching a program, and the lady, she was asking one of the young people, he was a Muslim, unfortunately, and he asked him, do you know, do you memorize any names of the prophets, sons, and daughters? He said, no. Uh, do you know anything about the rightly guided caliphs? He said, no, because most of the times, yeah, I'm just busy with the computer and with right. video games and these things. So. The, th the two things should be should go in the same line. Complement each other. Yes. You have yeah. to come to compromise between religious, for example, knowledge and technology and these things. Right. Uh, always, since you are a Muslim, you have to take knowledge. 
the, the, the Islamic one, and then also knowledge of medicine and all other branches yeah, of, of, of knowledge. And that's what we're talking about in this episode, the proper use of technology and letting it go uh, hand in hand with Islam, yeah. Because back to, to, to the area you have just been talking about is, is about technology and the use of technology. Nowadays, for example, the son is visiting his mother, he is leaving here a post on the Facebook. Right. In the past, we used to be very happy when we received just normal cards. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. You keep it, you put it, in, for example, in, in a box, and, but now we are just receiving an electronic card, yeah, yeah. which is just, you, sh you see it, and then you delete it. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, it's, it doesn't have the same impression yeah. as yeah. in the past. That's, no, a good, that's a good point. And th th that makes really a uh, family breaking down because the son doesn't visit his father, he just send right. him a text message, for example. Yeah, yeah, but that's no good. And instead of visiting him, instead of being, uh, uh, for example, dutiful to his parents, he's dealing with them in a technological way. Oh, they say, call your parents for Eid, not visit them, right? Just yeah. give them a call on that. That's changed. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, excellent point. Um, but as parents, we do have a responsibility because sometimes as parents, we leave our kids in front of the Internet mm -hmm. and we're not, uh, we're not regulating them and seeing what they're doing. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, we are sharing, we're sharing this, this, this problem, by the way, our responsibility. And when you talk about Islam or family or whatever, we have to think what we did first. We accept the idea of leaving the, our kids in front of the TV or in front of playing the video game or, in front of the, or playing with the Internet. Right. And then we blame ourselves. Why are kids like that? Yeah, right. So we are the reason of the problem. They are the output. We are the input. Yeah, yeah, they are the output. <laughs> we are the input. Excellent, excellent point. So what we expect and we give them wrong process. We right. didn't spend more time with them. So the yeah. social relations start breaking, breaking down. Yeah, yes, result, breaking. Yeah. Subhanallah, interesting point. Uh, uh, do you have any other questions from the Saudi audience? You guys are still thinking? It's OK, so we're going to come back with the next segment with another question and the theme song. We didn't, we're not going to finish the episode without someone singing the, the, the theme song to the, to the program. Uh, but Dr. Mahmoud, I think, like, like for example, for Eid, people always say, now, give your parents a call. It's, it's Eid. Yeah. But, you know, it's, not, like you said, maybe in the past people actually physically visited them. Yeah. But so somehow the, the technology has broken down the, the family unit. And perhaps that is why in the Western world, and I, I believe you both agree with me, somehow they are technologically more advanced. We can't deny that. And they say they are more civilized. But what do we mean by civilization? Because they are more advanced technologically, but what about spiritually and morally? Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Perhaps yeah. they have smartphones and, and computers and they know how to do all this stuff. But in the end, what, what about morally? I, I think we're ahead in that regard. Yeah. What do you think, Doctor? Oh, I, I, I think if we have to bear in mind that technology sometimes, as I think I mentioned a few minutes ago, that it might take away from the emotional side. Yeah. We might lose this side in a way if we stick to, to, to it all of our times. Right. right? Do, just try to do our best, try to stick to the instructions of our religion. For example, try to visit our relatives, try to pay them a visit, try right. to visit the patients. Because I would say, oh, the patient now he is, for example, in the hospital, or just I can't send him an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just I can't talk to him through, for example, the messenger or whatever. But yeah. this is not the right thing. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah. You might have the reward. I, I'm not sure because the reward is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, of course. But yeah. to have the full reward, it's better to have a visit, to yeah. visit him. So just check how does he look like and if he needs your support, if he needs. Visiting a person himself, this will give him more encouragement. Yeah, of course. Will help him to get more recovery. But what's the benefit of just reading Send him an email? Sending a text message, well, mashallah. Oh, send me a text message. You know, <laughs> because yeah. every one of us, he needs to see people around him. Of course. We, will, we, we are very happy when we see our relatives, our friends. Yeah, of course. Uh, to just live the visual, for yeah, example. Yeah, of course. Excellent. But that's not the same thing. It's not good. Excellent point. Our next segment, you guys, this segment's over. I want to talk about video games, inshallah. I want to get you guys' opinion about video sure, games. Sure. So you guys at home, stay tuned. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're having an excellent discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty, and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for? And the Prophet ﷺ was sent to all mankind. So the Ummah or the people of the Prophet ﷺ are all mankind since the time of the Prophet ﷺ till the Day of Judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us?
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back and thank you for staying tuned. You guys, we put together a cool report. It talks about the achievements of the Muslim nation in the field of technology nowadays and in the past. So it's, a, it's an encouraging video, so check it out. While most of Europe was living in the intellectually dormant times of the Middle Ages, a different situation existed in the Arabic countries. This difference can be traced directly to Islam and Muslim scholars. Because Islam urges people to advance in all fields in order to benefit all mankind and does not prevent people from advancement. Allah the Almighty says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Which means, Allah will exalt in degree those of you who believe and those of you who have been granted knowledge. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever seeks a way to acquire knowledge, Allah will make easy his way to paradise. So Muslims exerted their effort and dedicated to knowledge till they became the most advanced people during the Middle Ages in medicine, astronomy, mathematics, and philosophy. When these Muslim advancements transferred to Western Europe, they formed the basis of the scientific revolution. The glorious Qur'an is the only authentic and sacred book of this universe because books of other prophets are either changed or no longer exist today. The whole Qur'an is science in itself and calls the people to discern the hidden realities of the universe. It is said hundreds of times in the Qur'an that there are signs for those who think and understand. The Qur'an explains everything from the creation of this world and man to the destruction of this universe. For example, Allah the Almighty said, O mankind, if you're in doubt about the resurrection, then verily we have created you, Adam, from dust, then from nutfa, mixed drops of male and female sexual discharge, the offspring of Adam, then from a clot, a piece of thick coagulated blood, then from a little lump of flesh, some formed and some unformed, as in the case of miscarriage, that we may make it clear to you, to show you our power and ability to do what we will, and we cause whom we will to remain in the wombs for an appointed term, then we bring you out as infants. The arrival of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Qur'an was the most important point for science. It is basically the arrival of reality, that helps to understand the universe and purpose of its creation. The Qur'an and the Hadith describe their position openly and clarify that there is no clash between Islam and science. The Prophet, peace be upon him, raised the degree of learning so much to prove that for the understanding of the religion, scientific knowledge is so important and said, seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Muslim scholars and scientists in science and technology. Al Hassan ibn al Haytham is a scientist in physics, math, and optics. Ibn Sina is a scientist in medicine. Jabir ibn Hayyan is a scientist in astronomy, chemistry. Zaghlul al Najjar is a scientist in geology. He explains and interprets the Quranic verses that talk about science. He shows many miracles in the Quran that prove that the Qur'an is the word of Allah. Ahmed Zuwail is a scientist in chemistry who discovered the femtosecond. All right, you guys, salam and welcome back. I told you that video was cool. It was very encouraging. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me take both of your opinions, Doctor. Let me start with you. What did you think of the video? Well, uh, if this uh, person are servers <laughs> <laughs> and we can connect to them, <laughs> We can share their information. This would be great. And uh, this is the information, uh, in the intelligent information. If we can just take their information and feed it to the computers, really. Right, it can be useful, right. It can be used. Yes, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. Uh, and, and, and uh, good example for us, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Excellent point. And Dr. Mahmoud, of course, we had some Islamic history there. It showed great people. And uh, it also bring a, a Quranic verse. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you think? How did it make you feel? Uh, really, it's, it's amazing thing to uh, know our history and to know our civilization from the very beginning. And and uh, the Quran itself is is encouraging everyone to seek knowledge, as of the course. verse which has been mentioned. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in another verse, in the min it's only the scholars who fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala most because the scholars oh. they are quite aware about the 
power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ah. especially those who work in, for example, in medicine, and those who work in geology. Right. Because every day they find out something, and they connect it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is, is, as the report says, it's a miraculous book. That right. every day, the, the, the advantages of, of the Quran itself, nobody can find out how many are they. Because right. every day, it's you connect more. the Quran to new technology, to new knowledge, to... Right. And Allah is challenging us through the Quran with science and technology. I remember before I was Muslim, I read a verse in the Quran and said uh, something to, in, in, to the effect in English, we've created everything from water. Yes, that's right. And so Paul, this is challenging Muslims and non-believers and believers from science and technology, not just... Uh, yeah. just yes, sorry, yeah. uh, back to the point you have just said uh, that Allah uh, created everything out of water. Of water. Uh, there was a report which says this, uh, an only animal in the world, and I don't remember its name, it doesn't drink at all. But ah. scholars, they just went inside the body of the animal itself. They said there is a kind of system right. which creates water. Yeah, so there it is. So there's the answer yeah. to the question. Yeah, mashallah. That's very good. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent point. I want to go to the studio audience. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, I have some questions. Well, go ahead, Bob. Uh, Where's your name? Where are you from? My name is Asmi, and I'm from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm here in Egypt for studying in the University of Azhar. Oh, mashallah. Is that, is that what it said on your shirt, Azhar University? Yes, it's right. Can I see a little bit? Maybe the camera can see it? <laughs> oh, mashallah. So you came all the way from Bosnia to to seek knowledge here at Azhar University, mashallah, yes. very good. And better, what was your name? My name is Asmir. Oh, Asmir, very, thank you very much. What's your question? Uh, my question is, um, what was the reason because the young people from all the countries in the world using, like example, Facebook a lot of time, like uh, mm. four or three hours and days, and we talk uh, uh, like uh, face to PC. Why, why we don't use the chance to talk face to face? Because you are online and you talk with your friends. <laughs> What's the what, how can we stop that? Well, like example, we don't need a virtual world. We need a reality world. What's, yeah. what's the solution for the, all but these? That well, I think it's a good question for you. Well, it's, it's great, you, but... Uh, Let's think why people using such uh, technology or such uh, network for, for transferring their idea or transferring data or even talk. I think my first opinion about that is because it's cheaper. Excellent point. The cheap. Right. It's uh, economically, it's economically more feasible. It's mo yeah. You talk for hours for free. Yeah. So this is number one. Number two, how many people are sharing information with you? If you're looking to the Facebook and uh, looking to the list statistics about the Facebook, yeah. you find over then, uh, it's the number now is between 800, 800 million mm. till <laughs> 1 million. <laughs> this <laughs> is the total <laughs> number. Yeah, so <laughs> if you are sharing some information with this huge number, yeah, what does that mean for you? For example, if, if I'd like to invest in Islam, I'd like to say that, read it after me, subhanAllah. If 1 million say subhanAllah after you, yeah, right. Look for your credit. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it can be used in good so way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think also the brother means that sometimes perhaps they were neighbors or something and we chat on. I mean, I know actually sometimes in my own life, uh, I would be in one room on the computer and you're going to laugh, Dr. at this. My little sister would be in the other room and I would send her uh, a chat, um, like a, a messenger line. We're in the same house even <laughs> and, we're, uh, <laughs> and we're using this thing. So it gets out of hand, I think. It saves you time as well. Yeah. <laughs> for, for example, uh, now I have some students. Okay, I teach. So instead of going to the university and try to meet everyone, just right. I, I send them a message yeah. so everybody knows. If, yeah. you want to share, <laughs> if you want to share information with, for example, hundreds of thousands, yeah. at the same time, everybody will receive the same message. So it saves you time, it yeah. saves you energy. It's, it's a double-edged sword, as we, as we said earlier. I want to change gears to video games. I wanted to ask you, Doctor, about video games. Um, let me just share this fact with you, actually, both of you guys. Uh, April 16, 2007, Virginia Tech, this, this young man named Shao Sing Hu, he killed 32 people and wounded 17 people before committing suicide. It was a big thing in the United States, a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. And why did he do it? He felt people were picking on him. There's a lot of reasons. But anyways, he got the inspiration from a video game called Counter-Strike. So what can we say about video games and how dangerous are they? Uh, anything in life having good side and bad side. Right. But if you say about video game, video game for wasting your time, Muslim doesn't have any time to be wasted. Okay? Yeah, okay, right. So this, this is the first point. But what happens inside our uh, life, we didn't have free time for our family, so maybe we leave our kids playing this video game. We didn't even know what type of game they are playing. We just give them money or give them the equipment right. and let, let them playing. Right, so right. this is your break time. This right. is not correct. You can take your break time playing with your kids. Yeah, of course. Dr. what do you think? Yeah. I mean, these video games are not uh, productive, these violent video games. Anyway, uh, I think this, the, this issue, first of all, should be monitored by the family itself. You shouldn't give the chance to your children, just go inside the room itself, lock the door, and try to yeah. watch or play such okay. video games, because this 
that leads them as uh, to commit something like suicide. Yeah, you have yeah. to monitor them. If you have a computer and the computer is connected to the internet, it should be in the middle of the home, in yeah. the middle of the flat. Excellent point. Yeah, mm -hmm. you shouldn't leave them unattended because they might do something wrong. They might, yeah. for example, and they are learning these things. And when they grow up, you ask yourself, what happened? And yeah. it's your responsibility yeah, yeah. because you didn't choose, for example, the good website. Or t we have to try. Uh, I think the best thing we can do now is, is the investment in our children. Right. Instead of yeah. trying to find money, why shouldn't we spare some time to, yeah. to just stay yeah. with them, just play with them? As as uh, as the Prophet ﷺ, he used to carry <laughs> Imam Hassan and Hussein on his back. Yeah, right. He used to play with them. Yeah, right. One day, he even Sayyid Aisha, he used to. She had a toy, right? And he asked her, "What does what was this toy?" She said, "It's a horse." And he said, "A horse with two wings." She said to him, didn't you hear that Solomon <laughs> had a horse with wings that used yeah, to fly? Yeah. So the Prophet laughed. Right. So we need to follow this example. Yeah, of in course. Our yeah. Lives. And we talk about investing in the youth. We just did a show with the Imam Karim Abu Zaid, and he talks about in all the episodes just about this raising the youth and investing time and not letting them get into bad things like this. Let me share one more example with you guys. You guys have probably heard about it. The Columbine High School massacre on April 20, 1999. He killed 12 kids and himself and one teacher. And he said they played a video game called Doom. So like you said, we have to take responsibility about it, not let the kids play video games and, and adults as well, right? Yeah. Well, I'd like to mention something before we just talk about this case. Uh, uh, while, while we are looking for a security issue, we try to put it to our kids or to our family or, or in the internet, like security program or some security. Oh, we don't right. put security issue inside our kids in themselves. We're oh, looking for a program to secure the, their kids, the, our kids. Excellent point. So what you're saying is don't just buy a, a security blocker that blocks exactly yes. pornography exactly sites. Yes. Or really exactly yes. But instill with them the good Islamic Teach principles yeah. so they have the, the, for the criteria mm -hmm. in order to differentiate. That's, I mean, right. that's an excellent point as well, yeah. yeah. But I still think the internet needs some regulation in, in order to... Um, to kind of curb that uh, as well. But you guys, I always laugh at this. The United States government, they talk about Islamic uh, terrorism and extremism. extremism. We, we've had more active terrorism as a result of young disenfranchised youth playing video games. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a terrible thing. M most video games nowadays are concentrating on killing, yeah. bloodshed, and these things. Yeah. So if, again, to technology, if we can ask, for example, uh, like, for example, big investors, or right. those who, who have a lot of money, to right. try to uh, hire some young men who are very good in this field, and they can yeah. make something like video games, Muslim video games. Our history is full of these. Uh, why shouldn't we, for example, yeah. tell them about, about battles, about, uh, but in a yeah. nice way, yeah. Yeah. tell them violence. And I have one point. My student uh, having a project like that. He said that why didn't make, uh, uh, like uh, you mentioned about the, the valley, valley, something like valley. Yeah. Yeah. Why make a game like uh, uh, if, you make, if you make something, you have a hasana? If yeah. you do something, you have a say, yeah, uh, like and th that will count. And at the end of the day, you can look to your account and say, ah, yeah. today I make 10 hasana, or maybe 20, maybe 100. And so yeah. tomorrow I have to make good. something. So yeah. if you read, for example, a Quran or a verse of Quran, yeah. you go to the game and do in the game, ah, now click on this, you read the Quran. Click on yeah. this, you pray for two rakah. Click on this, you do yeah. something good for your neighbor. Instead like Farmville and the other game, when you go around <laughs> collecting gold, we can make video games. And also, yeah, exa that's an excellent point. And also the books, like in the United States, the Christians make books about all the prophets and stuff, and they teach their kids from a young age. Yeah. I think Muslims also need to do, do well, that more. We can make, uh, for example, some video games like uh, early Muslim sailors, for example. Yeah. Early yeah, Muslim, for example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, warriors like Salah mm -hmm. and Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, these so are teach them our history through the video games. Yeah, use the technology to find in the proper way. Uh, back to Facebook really quick. Before the show, uh, Dr., you had shown me the facts about Facebook. I wanted, I wanted to share with the viewers the, the viewership. Uh, the number of Facebook users in each country. How many Facebook users do you think there are in Egypt, Dr. Mahmoud? I think not less than five million people. It's, it's mm -hmm. nine million. Yes. Nine million, good guess. But considering we have, according <laughs> to this website, <laughs> uh, according to your, 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 the facts that you, you bring, uh, nine million, I mean, we have 85 million people here, because it also says in Chile, nine million. Yeah. But I think Chile doesn't have more than, I don't know, 15 million people or something. Yeah. So we are behind technologically. We don't have the infrastructure and the internet uh, like the infrastructure, the infrastructure is sometimes is a political uh, point of view, like f some countries uh, have any reg regulation to control the internet right. still till now. Uh, some other countries doesn't have the, the same uh, economic values or economic yeah. level. Uh, infrastructure can affect the internet and the user of the internet, sometimes the culture, sometimes the education. So right. Lots of factors. Lots of factors. In Egypt, it's supposed to be more than this number for using yeah. the internet. 
Yes, uh, but maybe this number is for the people who are using the, the, the Facebook only, but not the Internet. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I have another statistics take, talking about uh, the number of people uh, using the Internet here in Egypt. They are over then 20-something million. Oh, okay, like almost 20, like 25% yeah. or something. Uh, we do see that. How many uh, Facebook users in the U.S. do you think? Maybe more than a million? It's 155 million, according to that website we found, mm -hmm. uh, the doctor and his son found for us. In China, you think China at least half a billion, yeah? Yes. <laughs> but this website, I mean, it should. <laughs> it should yeah, it says half a million. Half a million. I mean, million that percent. must be a typo or something. Because yeah. it must be, uh, it must be like yeah. half a billion. So, subhanAllah, we see that there is a lot of good proper uses of technology. And we look forward to your program, inshallah, when it comes about uh, how can you use technology in, in a good way. And it's always a pleasure to have Dr. Uh, Mahmoud with us as well to talk about the, the Islamic perspective on, on these things because it's, um, it's realistic. Everybody's using technology. We have to learn how to uh, use it in the correct way. So that's the end of the segment. You guys stay tuned for the final segment. There's much more to come. Ask Hoda. Still in Mecca or close by to Mecca, then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as he, it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay the kafir. Forbade praying witr, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witr three rakahs and sitting after the second rakah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden. This is haram. To uh, euthanasia is permissible with animals but not with human beings if an animal is suffering killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible both uh, are acceptable but the majority say that after the record is the place of uh, qunut but both was reported have a question or concern on your mind Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, he will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back, you guys. In this segment, I want to talk about the email. Nobody's emailing me, and I'm feeling sad about it. All the other programs have lots of emails. I open up the inbox, and there's nothing there. Uh, there's only been a couple. So our email is talk at huda.tv. That's talk at huda.tv. Email us. Tell us if you like the guest, if you like the topic, if you like the host. It's your program and it's your show. So give us some feedback and inshallah we'll respond to you uh, personally. We did have uh, an email actually from one sister. Let me read it for you guys. It says, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Malik. MashaAllah. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you for exploring new and interesting issues in recent episodes. Please consider addressing the following issues. Mixing between the sexes in Islam. And what are the rules and limits of such mixing? And maybe Dr. Mahmoud, in an, another episode, you can address that question for us. Mm -hmm. And the second part of the email here says, also the relationship roles and responsibilities between parents, spouses, children, and what has Islam taught us about that? Thank you again. Jazakallah Haidan and Salaamu Alaikum. Omu Abdullah from Cairo, Egypt. Thank you, sister, very much for your email. Inshallah, we will address your concerns. And you guys, give us an email. Talk at Huda, uh, TV. Uh, this is the end of the episode, you guys. Do you want to give a final... Uh, your final thoughts for our young viewers who maybe perhaps are on the internet and, and using Facebook and those sort of things? Yeah. Um, I think I just advise every one of us to uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing everything he's doing. Whether writing an email, for example, you write in a good way, you shouldn't use the email to insult people or to create them any kind of disturbance. Use your smartphones or whatever you have. Don't use it for spying. Don't use it to try to find the faults with others, to try to violate their privacies. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Excellent. Thank you for your, your advice. Uh, and Dr. Ezreal, do you want to share with us a final thought regarding technology and Islam? Um, and, and yeah, how yeah. The word share which you mentioned in your question is great because sharing information, adding to the information, and our knowledge would be increasing if we are sharing information together. My advice is uh, before going to the technology, bef before using the technology, please do read about the technology because reading will let you know what the value which you can get benefit from this technology how can you uh, provide yourself from any dangers can affect you through it could be healthy thing or whatever so please read before using the technology exactly. the technology is good 
But when you know how to use it. Excellent point, because uh, Dr. Mahmoud, if someone has uh, expensive technology like an iPad or an I uh, something like that, it's like a donkey, it doesn't know how to use it, it's like a donkey that has books on his back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but actually, really quickly, uh, you had a funny joke you showed me. It sort of, do you want to tell the viewers that it's sort oh, of family? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. It's, the joke is about family sitting together. The young uh, brother say, uh, oh, I bought, I bed. Right. Then the father say, I paid. <laughs> <laughs> so one had an iPod, one had an iPad, and the father said, I paid for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for your time. I look forward yeah, to, to coming out to another episode, inshallah. And I, I look forward to your exciting program. I think it's going to be very well. Inshallah. Good, inshallah. inshallah. It's good coming soon, isn't it? Like? Uh, thank you, Zohar. And you guys, uh, in studio audience, thank you guys for coming again, inshallah. We look forward to having you for another episode. And I'll let you guys go off easy because you didn't sing the theme song. But next episode, I'm going to stick to my word on that. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys, uh, viewers at home. Thank you, everybody at Hoda TV. For giving us the opportunity to make this program of course you want to thank uh, the viewers at home and allah is about for giving us the strength to make another episode of let's talk so until next time we leave you in the care of allah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh <laughs>
things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome dear viewers from around the world Welcome to a new and exciting episode of your favorite program Let's Talk with your favorite host Malik on your favorite channel for the TV I'm thinking about changing the name of this show to Real Talk because we're talking about some really interesting topics with some really interesting guests and today's no different of course today i want to talk about technology what happened to the muslims we're like living in the stone age compared to the western world we used to be ahead now we're behind of course i can't answer these questions so i have a very prestigious man a lecturer of islamic studies at the uh, al-sar university you've seen him on uh, let's talk before mashallah he's back dr mahmoud abdinami thank you dr mahmoud islam or just the islamic uh, types of knowledge the islamic sense is not a tree read means you read everything Another example is the Prophet ﷺ. One day he told one of the companions, I think it was Zayd ibn Haritha, may Allah be pleased with him, he told him to try to learn another language besides Arabic. Uh -huh. right? So uh, they were the pioneers one day, maybe for many centuries. But what happened now? I don't know. Whom should we blame? Are we blame <laughs> Muslims? Should we blame the situations we are going through? I have no idea. Good. It's an excellent point because I actually read a book called uh, the crusade through Arab eyes and I gave a story about the crusaders when they came to uh, to the Middle East they were behind with medicine and science and technology in general and they had taken this information with them that they learned from Arabs and took it back to, to Europe and even the Greek philosophy I believe and things like that were actually reintroduced to Europe yeah. through Arabic translation so subhanAllah I think we've uh, we're going in the wrong direction, that's, that's definitely for sure. Let's yeah. talk about uh, something specific. Let's talk about the internet, yeah. uh, Dr. Mark. Well, how is this, uh, how can something like the internet, how can we benefit from it, and what should we stay away from? We're yeah. going to talk about the internet. The internet itself, you could say it's double-edged sword. Okay. Double -edged. Anyway, so if you are using it properly, if you are using it according to what Islam says to us, you can use it, first of all, to seek knowledge. You can use it to teach like uh, distance drunk. This and we have, I believe we have hadith also, Doctor, mentioning this about seeking knowledge. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So there's no doubt about there's no doubt about the uh, uh, seeking knowledge. But uh, what happened? I mean, in the past, Doctor, the Muslim uh, world was ahead, yeah. and now we found behind. Why? Uh, let's go back first to the just give you a brief about the Islamic uh, or sorry, the early Muslims who sought knowledge and who were pioneering technology. Excellent. We Excellent. have. First of all, in, 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 in Spain, Muslims were the first people to introduce what's called the irrigation system. Until now, the majority of historians agree that the system which is used in Andalusia now, in Spain, right. uh, is still the same thing like the Islamic origin or the Islamic one. Masala. We have great scholars like Al Bayouni who had written about uh, movements of the moon itself. He had a book which is called The Box of the Moon. We have another book which is written by Banu Musa. The book had hundreds of devices in a way that were, were introduced in this time. So uh, from the very beginning, Muslims were pioneer. Okay. And they are supposed to be like that because if we read the Quran, we might be shocked when we know that the first word in the Quran, it says read. Excellent point. The first word which was revealed to the Prophet it says read. It doesn't say read just...